welcome to the okay. character creation for our Star Trek Adventures. It's the first one, and Holly and I are so excited. <laughs> yeah, welcome everybody. Um, Hooray! We're gonna we're gonna be making Holly's character. Um, she has the pleasure of going first, so she can do whatever she wants. Um, everyone else has to follow up. Um, but we're going to be playing some Star Trek Adventures, which, if you guys did not know, um, it's this book here. It's by Modiphius. It is a role-playing game. All of the interior of the book is, like, Elkar's design, and it's pretty it's great. amazing. Um, and one of the cool things about the way that characters are built in this system is you kind of just, like, tell your life story from the beginning. So you do your species, the kind of place you were raised in, your upbringing, and then your Starfleet Academy years, your career experience, and then some events that happened during your career or while you were in the Academy if you're a wee bab. Um, and then you have a name and you're a character. Um, so like it'll be really cool to learn the way that like all of these characters, like their life up till now, up till we see them in, in the show that we're gonna be doing on Monday. Um, so if you guys were unaware what all of this is, uh, Holly and I are gonna be doing a, a Star Trek Adventures so short st series starting on Monday um, with a few other people who you'll see um, in the coming days building their characters. Um, Holly, aside from playing Star Trek, what do you do? Um, hello everyone, I'm Commander Holly. I was born to command! <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I stream a lot on here. If you go to command twitch.tv slash Commander Holly, and I also stream a lot on twitch.tv slash D D. Um, I play a lot of role-playing games and I play Stardew Valley, sometimes Blue Jay on Wednesdays. Yeah. Um and I love Star Trek. I really do love Star Trek. I have loved Star Trek ever since I was a kid, and I had a crush on Data. <laughs> and uh, know, right? yeah, because he had a cat. I was so good Spot. with words. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I made I made sure that when I was casting um, this show, I was like, I really want the people involved to be to be uh, familiar with and fans of Star Trek because I want you to be like, oh my God, like I'm, my character's just like this and this thing happened to them and it was like the Kobayashi Maru or some shit. Just start yelling about the Prime Directive. Like, yeah. you the Prime Directive. That's, that's what I want, you know? Like I don't want to have to explain to people what a Klingon so, is. Yeah, so, so I, have to, I have to tell this story because okay, uh, Ross always laughs at me about it. So when I was a kid and I was obsessed with Star Trek, I, my granny parked her motor home in Las Vegas and I got to go to the Star Trek experience, which was before a- Before it was dismantled. Before it was dismantled when I was 11 years old. And there was like a little museum where you could go and see the different ships. And there was like a model of the Enterprise. And then you got on the ride and like someone, they were like, one of you is an ancestor of Picard. And I was like, I hope it's me. <laughs> and I like lost my mind. And it was so good. And there were like actors and you got to go to the bridge of the Enterprise. And it was so rad. And like, well, it was like, I think it was supposed to be like an Enterprise class like ship. But it was so awesome. And then at the end, like they take you down an elevator and put you into Quark's bar. And a janitor is like, Where'd you guys come from? And you look up at the TV and it's like si UFO sighting in Las Vegas. And it's your little like shuttle taking oh, off. Oh, nice. It was like, it was the most magical thing. I've had I've had a lot of magical experiences with Star Trek and I just love it to death. So, yay. Yeah. And I introduced Ross to it. He had never seen Star Trek uh, or TNG and he fell in love. And I was like, Yeah. It's cool, right? It's great because it's the best. <laughs> I so. just finished watching all of Deep, Deep Space Nine in order for the first time because I'd only caught like an episode here and there, um, and that was an experience. Deep Space Nine runs the gamut of like really good and really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it does. It's it's amazing, and then you're just like, why is the Ducat episode? Satan? Yeah, the episode <laughs> where uh, they uh, genetic they modify Quark so that he's a lady because, oh, yeah, he, I forgot. because his mom gets like sick or something and she yeah. can't go to an interview, but it has to be a female Ferengi. Right, oh, of course, because it because it has so to. bad, so bad. Oh, it's so bad, but so good. Yes, I mean that's just as bad as the Voyager episode where. Um, Chakotay and Janeway get turned into lizards and they make no, lizard babies. No, it was babies. Tom Paris and Janeway uh, oh, that get turned no, into I, lizards. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. 
okay. because uh, Chakotay and Janeway got trapped on that planet that they thought they were yes. going to be on forever, and they almost made out. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but they didn't get that's turned right. into lizards. That's right. Oh, my God. Um, okay, oh. but we should really get started because I don't know how long it's going to take us to make yes. a character. Um, so first things first, um, you have to uh, pick your species. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I want to make really, like one of the really important things to me is that aliens in Star Trek are very human and I want to kind of shift a little bit away from that and make sure like if you want to be an alien, um, there has to be a really good reason for it and you have to actually be alien. You're different than human and there's a reason why you would play a Vulcan or a Betazoid or a Bajoran instead of a human. So... Um, I know we've already talked about it, and you were pretty sure that you wanted to be a human anyway. Yes, yeah, I wanted to be a human because I was born a command. <laughs> <laughs> and the vast majority of people in Starfleet are are human. Um, so uh, if you have your Starfleet personnel file open, um, which you should, uh, you can start filling it out. Your name is one of the last things, so okay, we can. All right, so I have my that. personnel file. My species is human. Yeah. Um, are, what rank are we starting as? You don't have to do that yet. You don't have to do okay, that yet. Okay, okay. So one of the, yeah. You choose a species, and um, every character in Star Trek Adventures starts with a seven in all of their attributes. The attributes are control, fitness, presence, daring, insight, and reason. Cool. Um, they're pretty much like the definition of the word. Um, so control is like how um let me go back control is about the character controlling themselves accuracy careful timing self-discipline daring is um no doubt hesitation or caution uh, it's very kirk daring is mm -mm. Uh, fitness is you know <laughs> constitution um physical conditioning um insight is understanding people and their feelings presence is like the power of your personality or the ability to command attention command and then <laughs> reason is logic it's very vulcan meticulous okay. analysis so um those are the attributes and you start with seven in all of them now as a human you get to add plus one to any of the attributes three of them okay okay choose three and add plus one okay mm -hmm. so i definitely want presence because i'm command so you add plus one to presence okay uh daring because i want to be uh kind of kind you know a little hot-headed just, just a little hot-headed yeah sometimes um and i feel like hmm and what is control again it's like control is like control of yourself um okay. as example you might use control when you're performing precise or delicate work okay when you're performing okay. a task that involves precise timing or accuracy so like aim um, okay when giving detailed think... instructions I think I'll give myself an, an, another to insight because I'm putting, I'm thinking, since I'm thinking command, I don't really need to do delicate tasks too You're often. You're going to delegate them more? Yeah, I'm going to be more of a of a delegator, like okay. get in the chair and start saying things like Picard would say, but with a little daring. <laughs> All right, so put that extra one in insight. More Janeway, I think, yeah. I love Janeway, so yeah. thank you for referencing <laughs> the first. More of a Janeway commander <laughs> than like a Picard commander. More coffee. Yeah, more black coffee. It's save save you from the Borg. Okay. Um, you also gain a trait, which Ooh. is just human. Okay. Um, so in, in Star Trek, humans are adaptable and resilient. Their resolve and ambition often allow them to resist great hardship and triumph despite great adversity. However, they can also be reckless, stubborn, irrational, and unpredictable. So traits will um, reflect quirks, strengths, and weaknesses. So human might help you in some instances, but in others where you might have people who are racist, um, being a human could work against you, right? Okay. Um, so your first trait would be human, and then you'd gain a single talent. So on page 107, you choose one of the two talents um, that humans can get. I see. So either resolute, which means you are indomitable and unwilling to succumb to adversity. You'll increase your maximum stress by three. We can go over stress mechanics later. 
Um, and the second uh, option is spirit of discovery. You have the drive, spirit, and courage to voyage into the unknown. You may spend one determination to add three points to the group momentum pool. Um, these are all be things that like are in the previous chapter about how right, the game right. runs. But basically, if you have more momentum, you can get more dice to try and make a roll and get more successes. Okay. Um, I think I will pick a resolute. Okay. So um, put to maintain resolute... my commanding presence. <laughs> yeah. So put resolute in your talents section. Okay. Um, and you don't have to like describe it, but uh, you, I don't think it has a maximum stress like marked. Um, right. Yeah, because it's just got boxes for you to fill in how much you've already taken. So maybe just put resolute dash. Increase, yeah, increase max maximum stress, stress by, by three. three. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can um, understand for later. Yeah, that's and that's easy. That's a good. That's a good one to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, have you entered those in? I have. Oh, it hasn't. Oh, Sorry. there we go. It now Marco updated. keeps tooting in the background. He's like toot toot. Okay, very cool. All right, so that was your step one, your species. Um, now for step two. Ooh, let's go past all the species. Um, we're going to choose your environment. So this is where you grew up. Um, if you have an idea for where you think your character spent their formative years, you can totally just choose one or we can roll for it. Um, but the options okay. are home world. Um, so that would be Earth. Mm -hmm. A busy colony, an isolated colony, or a frontier Ooh. colony. A starship so or Mass Starface? Effect. I, love, I mean, Mass Effect is just ripped off from Star Trek, but you yeah, know. a, a starship or starbase, or on another species' world. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I want to be a because uh, start to attend Starfleet, you'd have to attend it um, on Earth. Yes, the Star the Starfleet Academy is on Earth, but like okay. you can. But easily... where you grew up, okay? Because like Wesley went to Starfleet Academy. Yes, and he yes. grew up on a starship. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I'll say I grew up as a spacer on a starship. Okay. So that's what they call the your Vanessa environment, go ahead and put um, starship. Okay. And what that does, uh, here, I'll read it. The character grew up in space, traveling aboard a starship or living aboard a space station. While they're unlikely to have lived aboard a Starfleet vessel, only some of them carry families. Um, and we can say that your upbringing was Starfleet, so that might make sense for you. Um, yeah. Only some of uh, many freighters, transports, and other civilian vessels have a tradition of family or generational crews, and many officers with families take postings to star bases rather than ships. Those raised in space learn the ins and outs of shipboard life as children, and many are groomed for leadership or learn to fly a shuttle in their formative years. Um, so at this step, you will gain your first value. Okay. Um, your, a value, I'll just, let me go back to, there's so many things to learn for a new game, but let me tell you what a value is mm. oh yeah i see on my book right here a starship is a home it's crew a family uh yeah so uh one type of value is a relationship um they're what the character believes so like an example here um it could be uh james t kirk has four values which define the core of his personality these are doesn't believe in a no-win situation there's no such thing as the unknown, married to the enterprise, and risk is our business. So, yeah, you can, um, there might be examples um, for values. Yeah. Um, I love the starship is a home, it's crew family. <laughs> okay, well then do it. <laughs> That's your, so values are going to go, do you see where the values go? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. down, down below. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cry. Do it. Starship is a home, it's crew a family. This is like the only game where I'm just like playing the most like generic character, but it's like my favorite. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Like usually I play like a T flame, like a sorcerer, and I'm just like, no, I'm a human, and I want to command a starship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's your value, and then you will choose one of the following attributes and increase it by one, either control or insight. Ooh. So your control is seven and your insight is eight. Oh, I'm going to get more insight. I'm a really good insight. Okay, so insight is okay. nine now. Um, and then you'll choose a discipline. Um, so your disciplines all start at one. And this is basically okay. like 
you know a little bit of everything because you went to Starfleet Academy and they make sure that you're capable um, right. in a little bit of everything. So you will either advance command, con, or engineering by one. Okay. Command. I have an idea of what you're doing. <laughs> Okay, so step three for character creation, um, your upbringing. The nature okay. of a person's family and their surroundings has a massive impact, and whether they accept it or rebelled against it, it will shape the rest of their lives. So your upbringing options are um, either you were raised in, in a family that has a strong tradition of Starfleet service, um, your character's family might have a business or trade background, they might be agricultural or rural, which wouldn't really make sense growing up on yeah. a starship, but whatever. <laughs> um, they might have a, uh, a high like science technology um, family. Maybe your mom is Beverly Crusher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they might be artistic and creative, or they might be um, diplom diplomacy and politics focused. Yeah, I think I think I want her family to be Starfleet. Okay, so like... in your upbringing, um, you would put down Starfleet. Okay. Uh... Let me find it. That's uh, the very top. At the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Starfleet. Yeah. Cool. I would see that's why she was on a ship because her yeah. like, upbringing was Starfleet. That makes sense. Absolutely. So um, the character's family may have had a strong tradition of Starfleet service with at least one member of the family in every generation serving the Federation in this way. Perhaps both of the character's parents were Starfleet officers who met in service. Either way, the character's formative years were influenced by Starfleet. Um, if the character accepted this upbringing, the orderly, purposeful life increases their control by two and their fitness by one. If they rebelled against this upbringing, their bold and self-determined living increases their daring by two and their insight by one. Um, I think my character did not rebel, for sure. They were just like, yes! Yes, yeah, I want to command! <laughs> okay, so increase your control by two. Okay. So you'd have nine control and your fitness by one. So you'd have eight fitness. Cool. Um, and then disciplines and focus. Your character's exposure to the ways and traditions of Starfleet allow you to increase any one discipline. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't have everything in command. But you, I mean, it's... But I want it. <laughs> I know that you want it, but it's important to have, like, the ability to do okay. other stuff, I think so. maybe. Yeah, I think I should also have... in command as a kid, either. This no, no. I think I should have security as well. So I'm gonna give myself two security. Um, it's you get uh one, any one discipline. Um, so you just yeah two in security yeah. now. So now I have two in security. Okay, so now you get a focus. Okay, um, cool. So a focus is gonna be written um, in the focuses section. And this would cover skills learned during your formative years. So examples yeah. here are, it's basically more specific disciplines. So okay. it could be astronomical. Oh, do I need to pick another value too? Because it's it, there's values under the Starfleet thing. Uh, let's see. Um, it says right here, upbringing adds to a discipline, focus, attributes. No, not a value yet. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, you need one uh, focus. So it could be astronavigation, composure, extravehicular activity, hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, or a specific martial art, hand phasers, small craft, so that'd be like flying shutters, shuttles, um, <laughs> flying shutters, um, starship recognition, um, history. I, really, I just really want hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> do it this like total like kirk just like i'm gonna go out there and just fight people <laughs> maybe that's what you did as a kid maybe yeah i was like i want to be in starfleet so you just beat all the kids to shit oh no <laughs> no no what are the other ones i was i was just laughing at the idea so okay, uh, there's, um, is there history that's fun yeah history is one of them starship recognition small craft which would be like um shuttles okay hand phasers shooting Okay. Starfleet Protocol. Ooh. Um, well, let's, let's do Starfleet Protocol. Okay, so because yeah. you've been in Starfleet for so long, yeah. you're just very familiar with how that shit works. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm that just makes sense. Trying to make sure, because I think there was other examples. Oh, 135, farther along. Yeah, so other examples. I'm going to be everyone's killjoy. <laughs> <laughs> 135 um okay so wait 
Talents. No, not talents. We were looking for foci. Can uh, I say I love this image right here that's on this talents page? It's like, this guy's running around with a, one of those bat lift things, and she's like, ooh! Oh, no! <laughs> okay, um, so you'll... Okay, the focus is... Um, you'll also gain a single talent from the list of talents. So, um, page 135... Um, the following talents are available for all characters, regardless of species. So bold, um, cautious, collaboration, constantly watching, dauntless, personal effects, studious. They all have, um, okay. uh, like, once you pick one or have an idea. There's a command talents list, but you have to be certain levels in command. So um, Oh, see, I could have command three, and then I could have... Oh, you'll get like those other. when you do your um, Star Starfleet uh, Academy stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so get one of the first ones. Which is an uh, advisor. When you assist another character, using your command discipline, the character being assisted may re-roll 1d20. Oh, you want to take a command talent? I think you're just supposed to take a regular one in this. Oh, just a regular one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just from the talents list. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I'm looking. Doot, doot, doot. Oh, let's see. Ooh, that's fun. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So many good ones. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe she, okay. I do like constantly watching. <laughs> Constant vigilance. Constant vigilance, yeah. I like when you attempt a task to detect danger or hidden enemies, reduce the difficulty by one. So I do like that one. So I'll take constantly watching. Okay. So um, go ahead and put that under your talents. And then um, you can put uh, a little blurb that will help you um, remember. Okay, yeah. um, constantly wa watching. Constantly watching. Which is... I'm uh, watching. Yeah. yeah. Uh, reduce, <laughs> detect danger, hidden enemies, difficulty by one. Yes. Okay. So now. Now. Um, step four, Starfleet Academy. The years spent at Starfleet Academy are some of the most memorable and definitive of an officer's life, shaping the direction of their career going forward. Um, for those who pass the grueling entrance exams, the Academy takes four years, covering a mixture of intense training, academic studies, and practical experience. Much of this takes place within the main Starfleet Academy in San, in San Francisco, but other campuses and annexes exist across the Federation, and a cadet can spend time at any of these before they graduate. A graduate of the Academy receives a commission as a Starfleet officer with the rank of ensign, after which they may wait several weeks or even months for their first assignment. Some cadets, particularly those pursuing a doctorate, choose a path that requires an additional year or two of training and study, and instead graduate at the rank of lieutenant. A character's time at Starfleet Academy has a significant impact upon them in game terms. So, um, I'm going to guess, like, without even having to explain, obvi obviously when you go to the Academy, you have three tracks, Command, Operations, or Sciences, and you're going to pick Command, right? Yes. Um, That's right. <laughs> so the command track is for those who aspire to command their own starships someday. It focuses on leadership and interpersonal skills, diplomacy, decision-making and crisis situations, an understanding of protocol and procedure, and starship operations, which includes flight control. Many command track candidate cadets begin their careers as flight control officers and pilots, where their training can be put to the test on a smaller scale while they gain the experience necessary for more authority and responsibility. Command track cadets customarily undertake the infamous Kobayashi Maru test during their final year. So you will gain a single value, which should reflect some aspect of your beliefs that you develop during your time in the academy. Okay. Um, so these values are the things like you were talking about, like proud and honest, a responsibility mm -hmm. to the truth, um, emotion in a crisis only makes things worse, body and All mind right. alike must be he healthy. So like just a basic like short phrase that determines what you learned at the academy um that like really just a phrase that kind of wraps that up um do they where's the list you're reading from oh i was just reading from the previous ones on page 114 you know? okay cool i'm just gonna look at those ones mm -hmm. so those are all good the the graphics in this book are so visually pleasing to me <laughs> i just feel like i'm looking at my console <laughs> it's great i know that's real good um Let's see. 
I think I I think I do like I like proud and honest. I like that. Okay. So let's say proud and honest. And that goes in values. Yep. Okay, cool. And then um, you will gain three points in attributes. Um, okay. So that's going to be split between um, two or three attributes. So you can either increase three by one each or increase one by two and another by one. Mm -mm. I messed this one up. This one was, what was my control again? Seven. I think it was seven still. Uh, oh no, it was eight. I'm sorry, it was eight. I don't remember. Oh no, it was nine. It was nine. I remember it was nine. Um, Someone okay. in the chat. Yeah, it was nine. I just I wrote two and because it was increased by two, I was confused. Okay. Okay, so I need to increase three. I think I should have some more reason. So I'm gonna put reason up to eight. Okay. I'm gonna put presence up to nine. Okay. And I'm gonna go put um. Let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna say. In oh, let's do daring up. Well, let's do, let's do daring up to nine as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and then a discipline. You will select either command or con as the character's major, the subject they studied most intensely. That discipline is increased by two. Okay, it's command of a four. Perfect. <laughs> then the player suggest selects two other disciplines, the character's minor subjects, which were increased by one each. Okay. So let's say. What was con again? It was um con is like the piloting. Okay, let's say I was a pilot, so that's two. Okay, and then, and then one my more. Other major is security a major? Uh yeah, you it's like worth, you know, managing security, okay. threat assessment. Um, okay, cool. Then I'll do then that. So it was piloting and security. Okay. Um and then you will se select three focuses, at least one of which should relate to your chosen track. So this is where you can get the focus that relates to command. Okay, so I'd start fleet fleet. Oh wait, um, sorry, those are talents. Um, okay, the the focuses are are the same thing as before: astronavigation, composure, diplomacy, evasive action, helm operations, inspiration, persuasion, small craft. Um, okay, where are the what page are those on? I'm on one sixteen under focuses. Okay. It's just giving some suggestions. Team dynamics might be a really good one for a command. Um, or if you've been more, like, isolated due to your own, like, personal, like, bullheadedness and ambition, you might not mm -hmm. be very team um, diplomacy. I think I'm going to try, I think, like, maybe persuasion. Okay. And how many is it do I need? You're going to pick three. So persuasion. right now you have Starfleet Protocol. Okay, persuasion. Uh, I think I do, like, team dynamics. I'll do that one. Okay. Because I feel like being in small spaces in a ship your whole life you probably would have to have pretty good skills at that okay team dynamics and let's persuasion do, um helm operations okay so write those down in your focuses okay oh where'd they go i might have oh, went away that might have been it me. went away you spelled protocol wrong and god so damn I it i corrected it <laughs> did you did you fix it <laughs> yes i did okay thank you i'm so sorry no, it's fine. I, I, I live off of spell check. I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember things. Um, okay, so, what, so, so what persuasion, was it team dynamics, and helm operations. Okay, and then, okay. And then the, the next thing is the command talents. So you wanted, which command talent did you want? Oh, uh, where did it go? Advisor. I think I think I already had that one for having two. I think I wanted to get the three you on. Where'd it go? The only what page talent is you it? have it's on page uh, one thirty six. Okay. The only talent you have right now is resolute and constantly watching. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Okay, okay. Your next talent will be one from the command talents cool. list. I wanted to get um follow uh hold on. Oh, diffuse the tension. Okay. Whenever you attempt a task to persuade someone not to, result, to resort to violence, yeah. you may add a bonus d20 to your dice pool. Yeah. Cool. So go ahead and put that in your talent. So that's a Picard one. Yeah. Very Picard. Oh my not God, movie the picture Picard. with the battle. It's just so good. It's so good. She's that Bajoran's like, Whoa! what's happening? Okay. Okay, hold on. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whenever you attempt a task, persuade someone. No, oh, okay. God damn it. What? 
No, it's okay. Take your time. Never you spell it right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I put so much pressure on you to spell things. No. When you tell him. to violence. Okay. Um, I'm glad we're using D20s. That's fun. Yeah. Um, okay. And the next thing is going to be your career. So at this point, you'll have a choice to make about your character. And this is going to be how long have you been out of the academy? Okay. Um, so either you're a young officer fresh out of the academy with your whole career ahead of them you've served in starfleet for a couple of years or you're a veteran with decades of experience i don't think your character sounds like a veteran no they are definitely just out of the academy okay so <laughs> they're just um, you are a young and officer. so ready to command <laughs> so ready <laughs> You okay. can tell all these flaws are going to be great. Okay, so, young officer. The character is defined by their potential more than their skill. Their raw talent and their expectations of what the universe is like have not yet been tempered by rea reality. You will um, receive a value which must reflect, reflect your in inexperience and naiv naiv naivete in some way. Mm -hmm. So this is another phrase um, where you can uh, kind of succinctly, like... Uh, phrase the fact that you are young and determined. Okay, cool. Or just, like, say young and determined. All right, where's the... Where should I write it under? Uh, under values. Okay. I do think, I, like, young and determined is good. That's pretty yeah. much what it is. Yeah, because that's that seems to be, like, very much what your character... Yeah. Try hard. Yeah. Try hard is a good value, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> young and determined is a nice way to say try hard. <laughs> Okay, um, and then you'll also get a single talent, untapped potential. Okay. Um, that is, uh, the character is inexperienced, but talented and with a bright future. The character may, may not Enough. have or increase any attribute above 11, which you don't have, or any discipline above 4, which you don't have. Um, whenever the character succeeds at a task for which they bought one or more additional dice with either momentum or threat, which is how you get more d20s to roll, um, you may roll 1d6, and you'll receive bonus momentum equal to that, the result of that d6 roll. So 1 is 1 bonus momentum, a 2 is 2 bonus momentums, 3 and 4 are 0, and 5 and 6 are both 1, but they'll get an effect. So that's okay. like another, that's another, um, that's in chapter 4, um, how the yeah. game system works. But we can Which go... page is that, just so I can mark it? Uh, page 118, untapped okay. potential. I'm going to just put a little bird on it. I got little birdies. <laughs> and so you uh, cannot gain any higher rank than lieutenant junior grade. During the game, okay. Well, right now, at the start. Right, yeah, yeah. Because you're, you're basically right out of the academy, and the farthest you could have gone as a... Uh, in the academy, you would be a cadet if you just graduated the four years, and you'd be in a lieutenant junior grade if you did, like, an extra two years to get, like, a doctorate or special um, command. Basically, it's like a command doctorate. Right. Okay. I'm definitely going to say that that's what I got. Okay. Because you're, you're a tryhard. Yeah. Okay. So the rank is lieutenant. Lieutenant junior Jun grade. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and you got the talent of untapped potential potential did you write that down yeah yeah um you can just expand that section perfect i see it got it um all right so step six is going to be really fun i'm most excited for this okay. um it is career events so this stuff would have happened to you while you were still in the academy because you just okay. got out um but uh the character's career is a tapestry of events and experiences but among this a few will have been pivotal moments in the character's life a character defines which moments of their life are important in retrospect and what seemed definitive to an ensign may be inconsequential to that same officer decades later. Oh. So um, this is defined as two identical steps. You roll or choose a, car Ooh. a career event from the following list, and then you do it again. I kind of want to roll. Yeah, you could roll. Um, I think that's more fun. And then each event will increase one attribute and one discipline. Okay. So you actually cannot increase your command anymore. Right. But you can. You have two commanding. 
Um, it also in, uh, includes a few questions for you to ans answer and consider about how okay. the event happened and how it, it influenced your character. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see what happened to my character. If it sucks, maybe I won't use okay. it, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. I got an eight. Conflict, Conflict with, with a host hostile culture. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So if we look at that, the character was involved in a major battle with a hostile force and is okay. unlikely to forget the experience. Oof. So cool. a possibility here is because we're doing it in TNG era, mm. um, the Borg are a really big deal. Oh, yeah. Um, That'd be cool. And you could have definitely been in the Academy. They do do away missions and stuff. So right. it could have been that your uh, away mission, your cadet crew, um, ran into the Borg wherever yes. they were. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. Are that you would down? be awesome. Are you down with yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so who is the enemy? the Borg. Um, was it fought in space, on the ground, or both? I'm going to guess that, and you can probably say this, but like either you guys fought and most of you died and somehow you got out, or yeah. you just fled. Yeah, survivor's guilt, for sure. Okay, um, so your attribute is the character needed to be tough to survive, so you would increase your fitness by one. Okay. All right. The harrowing experiences of battle have increased the character's security by one. So now you have security four. Mm, okay, nice. Um, and the character gains a focus, which should reflect the skills they honed during the fighting. So examples would include hand phasers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, or shipboard tactical systems. Oh, man. I can get hand-to-hand -hand combat now. Yeah. Yeah, you could put that in your in your focuses okay. if you want. The hand-to-hand -hand combat. Damn, you went hand-to-hand -hand with a fucking Borg? <laughs> sure shit maybe that's my maybe i'm like borg stabber that's like my nickname at starfleet it was borg stabber <laughs> okay okay cool so one they more. went hand-to-hand -hand combat with the borg a couple times yeah they've totally done it because yeah the early because the borg... phasers didn't work i'd have to the phasers wouldn't work i would have adapted yeah okay all right i would have been screwed i would have had to hand-to-hand -hand combat mm -hmm. makes perfect sense okay and then you roll one more okay one more d20 uh-huh all right all right, that's a 16. Discovers an artifact. Well, oh, that's fun. That's way less depressing. So during a survey mission, the character discovered a device or fragment of technology from a now extinct civilization. What did this piece of technology do? And does it still function? Hmm. What if it was like something really dumb? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe it's like a a replicator uh, from the future that only makes like something like really gross and inedible. <laughs> Maybe it's a, like a replicator from a civilization that only ate algae. Yeah, that only or that yeah, that only ate like bricks. <laughs> something. <laughs> a dribble feeding machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a replicator that only makes makes a uh, makes tribbles. Oh God, no. That's, yeah, it's the worst. It's a triple. That's what they it's ate. A triple incubator. Yeah, it's a triple incubator, and that's what they ate. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Okay. So, does it still function? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> okay. Just for our own well-being. And what is known about the civilization that made this? Um, they were destroyed by by triples. <laughs> right. Their entire <laughs> they like their entire surface of their planet was it covered was in triples, and everything suffocated and died. Yep. Yeah, and thankfully the artifact no longer functions. <laughs> okay, so your studies of technology have um, produced numerous theories in d increasing your reason by one. Oh, yay. As in don't have like a bunch of tribbles. I don't know. Um, your character is more able to understand unfamiliar technology, so you increase engineering by one. Okay, that's good. And then uh, you gain a focus reflecting the event and its aftermath. Examples include ancient technology, computers, reverse engineering, um, hmm. uh, maybe something like archaeology or... I'm going to say ancient technology. That's cool. Okay, cool. So those are the two events that happened during your, um, your uh, academy away okay. missions. Um, both, both pretty exciting. One a little less so, maybe more mundane, but that's good. <laughs> okay, and then step seven is finishing touches. Um, so at this stage, you will receive one final value. It could reflect your career events that you just rolled, 
or represent some other element of the character that you really want to be incorporated. Okay. Um, so there was another ex uh, example of values. Um, holds everyone's to the highest standards. Nothing better than practical experience. Understands machines better than people. Meticulous scrutiny and pride in his or her work. The, pr the price of peace is vigilance, which oh. uh, is probably good with your, um, what was, you had a constantly watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, driven to ease suffering, which is more of a doctor thing. Mm. Uh, voice of the crew. Uh, the captain's second opinion, which would Ooh. be like a, a commander um, kind of thing. Right, right. Hmm. So yeah, this is one final value, and it, it's it could incorporate or reflect on the things that happen to you in the academy, or it could be something that you just really want to be a part of your character. Yeah, I think like um, I think it should just be something like I have to make my family proud, like something like that. Like like they're like so determined to. Um. So, what would be a good way to phrase that? Um, family obligation. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that I think their family's in Starfleet and like they're like trying to to like they could be officers as well and they're trying to like show that they have the same the same skills e despite like losing their crew uh during during to Starfleet. the Borg, right? To the Borg, which like again, there's nothing they could do about it, but like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So it's just family obligations. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You, you and I both know what it means, so we can, yeah, we yeah. can interpret it based, based on that. Exactly. So they feel like they failed by losing their crew to the Borg during Starfleet. But again, they weren't punished for it because obviously it couldn't have been help. And they fought hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Borg. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So um, you can increase two attributes by one each, but you can't okay. have anything above 11. Okay. Um, and you're at oh. nine for everything somehow? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're just really okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it. Okay. So I'll do one one for presence. Okay. So what can you do? How much? One each. Oh, okay. So we just do one each. Well, I mean, two, two. You can do two. So by one, by one each. So presence to 10 and then control, daring, fitness, insider, reason. Mm. I guess I'll do daring because I'm kind of reckless because I want to fix everything. Okay. Daring to 10. Okay, cool. Okay, and then you may not have any disciplines above five. Well, it's four for you. Okay. Um, for any discipline which has a rating above and beyond these limits, reduce it till it's within, which you don't. Um, mm -mm, you can increase two disciplines by one each, but none can go above four. Oh, so I can I can increase two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll do con three and then engineering three just okay. for that. Yeah, so you're not a science or medicine person. Yeah, yeah. So that's... Okay, there we go. Final details. So the character's attributes, when added together, should add up to 56. So let's just make sure that that is the case. I'll get this calculator here. And then nine times... It does, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're good with that. Yeah. And your disciplines added up together should be 16. Okay. Which it is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you should have four values, four talents, and six focuses, which you do. Yay. Um, and then uh, your character has a stress equal to their fitness attribute plus their security discipline. So your fitness attribute is nine. Your security okay. discipline is four. So that's 13. And then you get plus three from that resolute one. Okay. Um, so, so I have 13 plus three, which I, I just have an extra plus three. Okay. So I'm thinking, cause I think it edited to have 13 already by itself. Mm. Um, I'm just, I'm wondering if there's a way to like attributes and abilities. Oh, here we go. Um, there's gotta be, there's probably a way to uh to edit the character sheet um i'll figure that out but we know that you have three um yeah yeah stress. um and then on all attacks a character gains a bonus um damage die equal to their security discipline so you have plus four to all your attacks wow okay 
Um, where should I put that? Should, should I put that information anywhere? Or? I think that it's just like when when you attack, we'll know that that's your damage bonus because okay. your security discipline is that. Um, your personal details. So choose your character's name and age and decide okay. on a rough description of their personality and appearance. So um, the name, let's go to the human portion. Um, here we go. Very short. Human names vary wildly, and rather than make sweeping generalizations, it's better that players seek out other sources for names, considering <laughs> the vast range of languages, cultures, and traditions humanity encompasses. I just make it Jane Shepard. <laughs> Do whatever. Just make, just make it Commander Shepard. Um, um and then your age, because you are awesome. young. Let me check out the here. Um, uh, okay. A young officer is likely to be in their early 20s. Okay. So like 20, 25 or something. Mm -hmm. So they went and got a doctorate. So. Yes. So Neon, what kind of name do I want? You can think about it later if you want. Click on settings cog. There's a box to, to add extra stress. Okay. Let me... Settings, cog. Oh, I see, I see. I got this. Stress, current, 13, 16. Boom. Oh, wait. Current. Bonus, three. That's what I want. There we go. There we go. Thank you, person. You're great. I'm like, where'd it go? Sorry. I, I did it. Ah. You're good. You're fine. Everything okay. is fine. Thank you, techie. How do you go to the next page? You did, huh? You went to the next page. I don't know. How do you do that? Uh, are you talking like attributes? about the character sheet? So um, I saw another page. Oh, there's a cog on oh. by Starfleet personnel file. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So uh, you'll decide on your age. Did you already? Is there a place to write that? I think it's just in the name thing. Okay. Um, all right. So all right, I think her name's going to be Lily. Okay. Um, Lily. Hmm. I'm trying to think, um, of what some people that have been into space that are other than Shepard. Cochran. Co yeah, that's another space person. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Another space name. Someone else who went into space. Uh oh god. Um Archer? I mean Aldrin. Archer's good. Let's do Archer. Okay. Lily Archer. That's good. That's a very Star Trek y name. Okay. And then um she her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your age is twenty five? Yeah. Hold on, I will not. Lily Archer. Female or she her. Uh, and then age 25. Okay, cool. And then um, your homework is to get a rough description of your appearance and personality, but you can do that later. Okay. Um, your department um, is man. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> just, I'm just. I just look like the space cases girl with the bl with the rainbow wig. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no Don't. rainbow hair. We're humans here. I know. Um, okay. So what is it? My what? Uh, your uh, department is uh, command. Okay. Do, do, do. Where does that go? I'm um, just put it in your assignment. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, da, da. Let me get. Okay. So um, the suggestions for personality are. Um, once players have an idea of what their characters are like and have thought about what, what experiences and career choices have shaped their life to date, consider what sort of personality they have. Are they grumpy, by the book, adventuresome, wise, thoughtful, tired of routine, calm? Even a few adjectives like this can help in locking down the personality of a character. Um, and then uh, appearance. Uh, the character species will give you some idea, but the finer points, such as their build height or any distinguishing features, will give the player something to picture. Um, and the fan artist, something to fan art. Oh. Um, then there's relationships. So um, consider family relationships. Where's the rest of your family? Um, do you have a spouse, partner, girlfriend, boyfriend? Um, I don't know any other type of uh, intimate relationship. Are uh, they mine's in... Riker single. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you in contact with the rest of your family regularly? 
how did they respond to your character being assigned to this mission? Um, and then, of course, uh, the main characters. Um, so when other people uh, make their characters, we'll determine together um, what, how those characters interrelate and whether or not you know each other, how you regard them, how you're regarded by them, if you're close friends with any of them, and etc. So that's something that we'll have to do after this. Uh. Um, and then the rank and role. Um, you are uh, in the command uh, section, but you are not a commander. You're just a lieutenant. Um, so let's see. You're not chief of anything. You're not a science uh, officer. Let me see. The rank is the highest rank the character taken with the untapped potential rank. It's also the lowest that may be taken by any character with the role of executive, executive officer, chief of engineer, chief of security, or chief medical officer. Okay, so you can be um, one of those ranks. I think right now we should just leave your rank kind of like we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, see what everyone else is. What everyone else does. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like second in command is a good place for you or um, chief of security. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's like a security officer or a communications officer. Um, yeah. Would be good. Or helm would be good for you too. So um, we'll leave that blank for right now because we really need to figure out like yeah. how everyone interrelates. I'm still rising the ranks. I want to be the captain, but I, I'm definitely I'm still young. Yet. Yeah. Still young. Okay, so um, as for uh, your equipment, so that will be in your other equipment. Um, you will have your uniform. Okay. Your communicator. Hold on, let me get my. Ooh. Where is equipment? Ooh. It's uh, in on the first. It's on the first. Oh, it page. is. Okay. Whoops. Sorry, I I did that. Um, down at the bottom, other. Equipment. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, that was there. Okay, so uniform. Mm-hmm. Communicator, mm -hmm. tricorder. Is it quarter or quarter? Quarter. Okay, yeah. So, okay. And then you'd get a, a sidearm, which would be a phaser type two, probably, because you, you're security guy. Right. Security lady. And then um, I don't think that you have any tools. No, I think I just, that makes sense. I'm not engineering anything. Okay. So that's your character. Yay! We did it. Um, so for let's 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 go over um, go over your character um, by just do like your name, species, and then um, the all your like values and, and talents and stuff. Okay. Um, so my name's Lily Archer. Uh, she her pronouns. She's age twenty five. She's human. Uh, a lieutenant in Starfleet. I was born and raised on a starship. Uh, her parents are in Starfleet, and she wants to command and make her parents proud. She lost her crew at, in Starfleet to the Borg and had to, had to fight them oh, no. <laughs> and then survived, but has survivor's guilt, and it's a try hard. <laughs> um, and uh, her values are a starship as a home, its crew a family, which would make losing them even harder for her. Yeah. Uh, proud and honest, young and determined, and family obligations she wants to make her parents proud mm -hmm. her focuses are star starfleet protocol persuasion team dynamics helm operations hand-to-hand -hand combat and ancient technology um, so you like you you had uh your major was command and you minored in helm and archaeology <laughs> yes apparently nice i was just like i don't know you always run into weird shit in space like the <laughs> crystalline entity and stuff you know there you go perfect yeah uh, talents are resolute, um, constantly watching, diffuse the tension and untapped potential. And I think that's it. Yeah, perfect. All right, so that is Holly's character. If you missed the beginning of this, it's in the Twitch VODs for subs, or it will be on my Patreon. Um, hey. You can uh, sign up for the Patreon for as little as a dollar, and it'll be up there. And then I've got to go make another character. With, oh, yay! <laughs> with Pumpkinberry. So yay! Thank you, Holly, for joining us. Of course, anytime. Um, and we'll see you guys on Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific for our very first episode. I'm so excited. Bye.